Batman's costume changes way too many times in the DCAU, and it's driving me quite batty. Fair warning, lots to cover, trying to keep it as short as I can, I'm gonna talk like really fast. So here's the deal. For those not familiar, there's this little thing called the DC Animated Universe, which was like a bunch of superhero cartoons that ran during the 90s and early 2000s that all shared the same world with one another. They all more or less had the same producers, one show led to another, characters crossed over into each other's shows. Well, okay, mostly Batman did. Actually, three of the eight shows that made up the DCAU were all about Batman, and the dude appeared at least once in every single one of the others. To be honest, this universe was mostly Batman. We saw his origin a few times, we saw him training, we saw him in his 20s, his 30s, his 40s, 60s, 70s, 90s, we saw him a lot. But despite Batman arguably being the central focus of these cartoons, there was and still continues to be a ridiculous amount of miscommunication or unnecessary change in direction when it comes to the guy's costume, which often screws up episode chronology, crossover fluid, or just a basic understanding of how this universe works. And that's what we're gonna be putting under the bat microscope in this here video you're watching right done now like. The costume Batman is seen wearing in any given episode or movie that's part of this animated world is perhaps the biggest continuity conundrum of the entire DCAU. On a surface level, if you didn't read any of the spin-off comics or you didn't ever try to watch these shows in chronological order, you may have never noticed this, and you can easily say, oh, well it goes this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, duh. And admittedly, you're not completely wrong, but... <sighs> there's a bit more to it. Now, I must say this right from the start. I did a lot of research for this video, and even though I'm like the biggest DCAU fan there is, fight me, I probably missed one or two things. Nevertheless, I did my best to catalog every single unique instance of a bat suit in the DCAU cartoons, movies, tie-in comics, video games, and even f***ing allergy medication advertisements. Though, disclaimer, I did choose to skip comics and books not officially part of the DCAU, like these kids' books with DCAU character designs they've been putting out over the last few years, both for my own sanity and because they don't really count. That doesn't mean they aren't great! And for the same reasons, I chose not to go through the old Cartoon Network.com minigames, but also those are just stupidly hard to find anywhere anymore anyway. So now that we're clear on where we're going, <laughs> we can start the Batmobile and head out on this headache of a journey. We begin on September 5th, 1992. The debut episode of Batman the Animated Series, The Cat and the Claw Part 1, airs on Fox Kids. Here we saw the DCAU Batman for the first time in all his B-Taz glory. Short ears, blue highlights, little oval cap things on his belt, the works. This is the same costume Batman wore throughout the rest of his original cartoon through 1995, and I'm talking real world dates here, save for a few flashbacks, which we'll get to in a second. It's also the same bat suit we saw in the Mask of the Phantasm feature film in Christmas 1993, as well as the Batman Adventures spin-off comic from 92 to 95, Batman and Robin Adventures from 95 to 97, and a handful of instances throughout this same 1990s time period seen on the screen here for the next 3, 2, 1, gone. This was THE bat suit as far as we were all concerned. But boy, did things get concerning down the road. Stay tuned. Amid the nearly 100 instances of this bat suit, we got a total of three flashbacks that all showcased another costume, an earlier, less refined prototype of sorts, first seen in the episode The Mechanic, later seen in Robin's Reckoning, and then again in Mask of the Phantasm, all in 1993. This would be revealed in the Phantasm movie to be Bruce Wayne's very first bat suit after he tried out this ski mask leather jacket combo that didn't work out super well. It's also in a Batman Adventures Volume 2 comic later, but that's not really important right now. So if you're keeping up so far, we now have two distinct bat suits on the radar. Everybody good? Good! On September 13th, 1997, the new Batman Adventures premiered, moving the Batman stories of the DC Animated Universe to Kids WB to join its Superman-centric counterpart. The first episode, Holiday Nights, though not chronologically the first adventure in this era, gave us our introductory look at this new Batman costume. Not only had the art style in general been simplified and streamlined, the bat suit followed suit. Gone was the yellow oval that surrounded the bat symbol on his chest, gone were most of the suit's highlights besides the one spanning his shoulders, which was now gray instead of blue, and gone was his more heavy-duty solid utility belt in favor of a new cloth-looking pouchy one. As the new Batman adventures went on, Batman wore nothing but this suit on screen, not counting his fireproof armor. This included his crossover appearances on the Superman cartoon and the handful of times he showed up in its affiliated comic, and the allergy medicine comic, and mac and cheese boxes, and fast food bags, and blah blah blah. So if you're counting, that's now three bat suits. One, two, three. All different, all fine so far. James, I don't get it. What's the problem here? You're wasting my time. How is any of this a conundrum? I'm getting there, honey. In early 1998 came our first outlier in this chain of Batman costumes. A limited comic series was released called The Lost Years, which answered fans' questions and filled the two-year gap between Batman the Animated Series and the new Batman Adventures. In the latter half of the series set during TNBA, Batman wore his suit from that cartoon. But during the first two issues, Batman wore his BTAS era costume, which seems like it would be fine, yeah? That just means those issues are set during the Batman the Animated Series time period, right? What? It's just an ordinary crabby- OH MY GOODNESS! You see, when these stories were seen in animation, they put Batman in his newer costume 
the whole time. Now, while Bruce Timm's rule of if it's on screen, it's canon would lead us to believe Batman, in fact, was wearing his TNBA era suit at the time Dick Grayson quit as Robin, and it's possible that's accurate. However you look at it, we're now faced with our first conundrum. You happy? No? Me neither. On our little bat suit timeline here, we now have this weird overlap area, which a happy James does not make. And it's only going to get more frustrating from here. <laughs> oh yes, it is. If we keep going chronologically through real time, our next DCAU Batman thing is Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero in March 1998. This movie, by all accounts, is set before Robin quits, before Batman changes costumes, and before the Bat family knows Barbara is Batgirl, yet it came out after the new Batman Adventures was already airing. This one at least has an explanation. The movie got delayed several months following the less than enthusiastic critical reception of the also Mr. Freezy Batman and Robin film the previous year. So technically, Sub-Zero was supposed to come out in a time that made much more sense for it to do so. Therefore, we can let this one slide and just know it doesn't actually screw anything up. The TNBA costume showed back up in that cartoon spinoff comic later that year, Gotham Adventures, which follows what we've laid out just fine. But then there's the TNBA episode, Mad Love. This episode goes back and forth between the show's present day and the past events that led Harley and Quinzel to become Harley Quinn. Since we first see Harley in costume in the BTAS episode Joker's Favor, during which of course Batman is in this earlier Batsuit, it's safe to assume that she became her supervillainous self during this same era. But of course, we get this flashback and... Now, there's a couple possible explanations for this. For one, if we compare the designs of the first and third bat suits, they're rather similar. The bat symbol, the belt, most everything except the color palette is comparably close. So maybe Batman was wearing this early costume when Harleen became Harley Quinn. Unfortunately, when we take into account everything we know about Harley's age and college career, as well as the Joker's acid bath, AKA bath number two in the top 10 baths in the DCAU, the math just doesn't add up. Plus in the comic version, Batman is in his BTAS costume. The only other arguable reasoning for this bat costume to appear in this era on screen is, well, Harley is kind of bonkers. She's the one telling this story in the episode, after all, so it's not too far-fetched to say she's just remembering it wrong. This same workaround could be applied to that Lost Years mess earlier, since Nightwing is telling Tim Drake the tale, and perhaps Tim has never seen Batman in any other costume, except he has potentially, since in the Lost Years comic he spies on this Joker fight, so I'm still triggered anyway. And neither explanation is ideal, nor is it grounded in any real evidence. So again, we have a problem. Multiple bat suits in multiple eras when different bat suits should be the ones we see. Now, these are just cartoons, you might say. This doesn't really matter, you might say. But to that, I retort, do you know what YouTube channel this is, pal? If you've been following along in your TV guide, you may have noticed I skipped over the premiere of Batman Beyond, which did actually happen a few days before the new Batman Adventures aired its final episode. While we won't really be taking a hard look at the Beyond era bat suit in this video, it is worth noting that throughout the entirety of that show, we see the TNBA era costumes in display cases in the Batcave, which would give us the initial impression that these were perhaps the final suits worn by these characters, and more importantly by Batman himself, before he invented the Beyond suit and started wearing it instead because of old man syndrome. However, it's only fair to point out that Batman Beyond did jump 20 years into the future very first thing, so while the producers of the show seemingly intended for Batman's new Batman Adventures costume to be his last quote-unquote normal costume, they kind of shot themselves in the foot by leaving such a big time gap open. After a few more instances of the TNBA costume in Superman the Animated Series, media, as well as one weird non-canon DCAU-style No Man's Land TV show within a comic comic, this Batsuit returned yet again in the infamous flashback sequence from the direct-to-video film Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. Now, yes, this portion of the film has been talked into the ground, all the way from when did it happen, which we answered, to how old is Robin during it, which we answered, to why is Batman wearing the wrong costume in it, but that's what we're going to talk about right now. How is it the wrong costume, you may ask? Well, when I say wrong, it's kind of up for debate. Let's look at what we've got so far. We know Batman started off his Bat career in this costume, then moved on to this one by the time of Batman the Animated Series, and changed over to this one sometime between B-Taz and the new Batman Adventures, during which he wore it all the time and, to our current knowledge, wore it until he made the Batman Beyond suit. This includes the next couple DCAU Batman appearances chronologically, the video games Chaos and Gotham, and Vengeance. But if you've made it this far in the video and care enough about any of this, you probably know that the Justice League cartoon, like, existed. November 17th, 2001 gave us the three-part Secret Origins, the premiere of Justice League, and the first appearance of a new present-day Batman costume that timeline-wise exists after the new Batman adventures. In a way, this suit is really just a cosmetic upgrade from the TNBA suit. The ears are longer, his boots have heels, the utility belt is different, and the gray hue of his costume's highlights has been replaced with that of a purplish blue. It's even been mentioned by the art directors to be essentially a combination of the BTAS and TNBA suits. Batman wore this suit throughout the JL and JLU cartoons, as well as their spin-off comics, and the second volume of the Batman adventures, which basically defines this period of time in Batman's life as when he wore, well, this suit. Which would be fine 
If not for these static shock appearances, the Gotham Girls comic, the Rise of Sinzu video game, and the Harley and Ivy comic over the next few years, which all, as far as we've been able to calculate, occur either during or very soon after this Justice League Batsuit era. Batman specifically goes back and forth between his new Batman Adventures costume and his Justice League costume multiple times through Static Shock's production order. This definitively turns the early 2000s of DCAU time into a chaotic mess of this Batsuit, no this Batsuit, no this Batsuit, no this Batsuit. We were on a pretty okay path until everybody behind DCAU Batman stories decided, hey, it doesn't matter, just use both Batsuits back and forth whenever you want, no one will care. Well, I care, sir. I care. This in turn affects the return of the Joker flashback, because as far as we know, Batman should theoretically be in his Justice League suit at this time in his life, since we've been told this pivotal moment in the Bat Family saga occurs after every other present day event. Could we say the same sort of thing about these flashbacks, in that Barbara is telling Terry a story and that's how Terry thinks of Batman and Robin? I mean, I guess, but this whole thing is so stupid. However, with the amount of times Batman seemingly switches back and forth between costumes, maybe it's okay. See, the easiest explanation would simply be, <clears throat> Batman has multiple costumes that he wears whenever he feels like it. On a meta level, this makes a lot of sense to explain away the discrepancies. Batman simply wears the TNBA suit sometimes and the JL suit sometimes. Simple. But on a storytelling level, there's no real reason he should switch on and off. Is one suit better for different situations than the other? Perhaps if we saw, oh, the Justice League suit has insert super cool piece of technology here, or something that otherwise mildly gave it an edge over his other suit, it would make sense for him to wear it on Justice League missions. But we don't see that because that's not the case. If he does switch back and forth between the suits, how is it he coincidentally is always wearing his Justice League suit when Justice League missions come up? Shouldn't we have a couple of Justice League episodes where Batman is randomly wearing his TNBA suit and someone's like, dude, what's up with the gray costume? And he's like, uh, I didn't know we were going to be fighting Mongol today, sorry. So the most obvious reasoning seems to be that maybe these are in fact the same costume. There's a few factors to back this up. For one, we never see the Justice League suit in the Batcave in Batman Beyond. We never see any of Bruce's old suits besides the new Batman Adventures one that hangs around in the display case, partially because, as old Brucey describes, Most of them are pretty torn up. You know, bullet holes, burns, gashes. But if these cases are meant to signify the final iterations of the Bat Family costumes before the Beyond era, it wouldn't make sense for Batman to choose to arbitrarily put his second to last present day costume in there instead of his last one. Strangely enough, these same display cases show up in the Justice League finale Starcrossed, which if you've seen our yellow bat suit video, you know really grinds my gears. Long story short, the appearance of that yellow suit and the display cases in general have been confirmed by episode director Dan Reba to have been an animation error. Hold your applause. Never meant to appear in Starcross in the first place. They're simply reused backgrounds from Batman Beyond. Counter this with Bruce Timm's on-screen is canon definition, though, and you start to see why this whole thing really makes my brain melt in my f***ing skull. There are other things that back up the they're the same suit hypothesis. First off, there's fellow Justice Leaguer Superman and Wonder Woman. Both of these characters appear in Justice League's first season with cheekbone marks as part of their character designs, but by season two, the creative team had done away with them. Was it ever talked about on the show? No, because for things like this, we have to take a step back from our immersed in cartoons viewpoint, I know, it's hard, and understand that sometimes an artist draws something one way and then draws something a different way, making creative decisions that don't affect the in-universe Lore. Their cheekbone marks went away because the show's producers felt like it. The characters didn't get plastic surgery, they didn't change physically at all. It was just an artistic decision. Easy for you to say, Miss Cheekbones. Another example of this type of change might be Agent Bennett in the Zeta Project, who looks a lot different than he originally did on Batman Beyond and even has a different voice actor. It's an advanced tactical synthoid, Infiltration Unit Zeta. If the U.S. government decides to stick a tracking device up your ass... <laughs> You say thank you! But an even bigger example of this is the Joker, who went through two major design changes over the course of his DCAU lifespan, pun intended, going from his classic Batman the Animated Series look to this nightmare of a bad move in the new Batman adventures to a much more pleasing amalgam of the two in Return of the Joker and subsequent appearances. In different moments, he even canonically appeared in all three designs for this New Year's Eve TV broadcast. Yet, he's still the same person, a grotesquely deformed monster, but a person just the same. If we apply this same character design logic to Batman, it's not hard to see that perhaps this and this are one and the same, and simply interpreted differently artistically for different scenarios. This is even further backed up when taking into consideration the back and forth looks of other Bat stuff, between Justice League, Static Shock, and TNBA looking movies like Batman Mystery of the Batwoman, and the more recent Batman and Harley Quinn, which uh, includes an even different Bat suit, one that's sort of like a combo of these, set during Justice League Unlimited. When asked about the TNBA Bat suit's usage in Mystery of the Batwoman, a film we just recently uncovered happens after JLU, DCAU producer Alan 
Burnett had this to say. Kurt Gaeta, who produced and directed Batwoman, may have not even thought about continuity. He just used the model he liked. Which, while sort of a cop-out on Gaeta's part, does support the idea that all the switching back and forth is an artistic decision, nothing more. We also contacted several DCAU artists on the subject, and what we got from Gotham Adventures artist Tim Levins may just be the best thing I've heard all year. I've never really thought that the characters change their outfits from one series to the next. To me, each TV show was simply a different iteration of the Batman universe. Sure, they were connected by the people creating the shows, by the voice actors, and even by some storylines, but when I watched TNBA, I never really thought that Batman was wearing a new costume. That's just how he had always looked in this version of the Bat universe. Similarly, I don't feel that Commissioner Gordon lost a bunch of weight in age 15 years in between BTAS and TNBA, or that the Joker decided to hollow out his eye sockets and stop wearing lipstick. They just always looked that way. The same reasoning applies to the JL and JLU shows. Batman didn't decide to make a new costume with longer ears and brighter colors in between TNBA and JL. He simply always had that design within the context of that version of the DC animated universe. In Batman Gotham Adventures number 50, I decided to go against my thinking on this subject simply because I thought it would help readers better understand the story. Logically, to me anyway, the idea that at some point Batman and Catwoman both decided to ditch their old outfits and replace them with new ones seems unlikely. But in this case, the costume change worked for the purposes of the story, so I went with it. It seems Levins at least is under the impression that Batman is Batman, drawn to reflect the stylistic changes throughout the DCAU, unless storytelling evidence presents itself otherwise. And Levins is like, the man and stuff, so. Here's what all this nonsense boils down to. Since the debut of Justice League, we've gotten dozens of iterations of the TNBA slash JL Batsuit. Some with blue highlights, some with gray, some with this belt, some with that one, some with shorter, some with long, some with extra highlights, some with highlights in different places. I could go on for hours about this. And like Tim Levins alludes to, despite all the visual weirdness in DCAU Batman's quote unquote present day career, we do get a few instances in the canon spinoff comics that solidify the existence of Batman's first two costumes. Meaning we can't simply say, oh, there's just one Batsuit we keep seeing artistically interpreted differently. There's definitely this one, then this one, then a big old mess. And if there is only one post-BTAS Batsuit that just keeps taking subtly new forms, then if we take this line from the Joker to be literal, is it too long and I missed the cape, we could say that it's always this costume, effectively meaning the return of the Joker flashback isn't inaccurate after all. Maybe I'm the only one who cares about this. Maybe none of this matters and I should just stop worrying about it. It's no big deal. Stop being mad. But I can't. And I won't. And the best slash worst part of it all is, with the resurging DCAU popularity in the last few years, this universe probably isn't over yet, and may not be for a long time, or really ever. Which means we're going to get many more almost the same as each other bat suits in the near future. So what do you think about all this? I'd love to hear your thoughts, either to call me an idiot or to back up my question level conspiracy theories. Because I did so much sifting through the sand to find as many bat suits as I could from the 25 plus years of this universe's existence, I'd be happy to join you all in a discussion in the comments below debating which suits are canon and which aren't, which suit came before which, all that good stuff. And by good stuff, I mean stuff that is really really nerdy. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget we have videos out on this channel twice a week, on Sunday and Thursday, and then Monday and Tuesday, which you can be sure to not forget if you subscribe, click that little bell thing, and then you tell the, the always do notifications, because apparently that's a thing now. Be sure to give this video a like so I can feel good about myself. Check out our Patreon linked below so I can feel like all this effort was worth it. And stay tuned for more upcoming content from the Watchtower database.